Good morning, my garden friends. This is the end of July, and I just wanted to show you what is still blooming and what is still surviving. Our extreme heat <clears throat> here in Windermere, Florida, Zone 9B. Uh, our humidity is hitting 94, 96 every morning and cutting back to about, oh, 75 to 80 in the heat of the day when it gets up to about 90 degrees so it is hot and it's a pressure to survive but you can see this coleus that is like a velvet is still hanging in there and it hasn't even started to uh, send off a bloom head but you can see that the the marigolds all need to be either deadheaded or just cut back and we we begin again and i think that's probably what will happen here and uh the uh, crepe myrtle is still blooming at the tips, but not near as pretty as it was. Uh, I could cut those back halfway and see if I could get them to rebloom. We probably still have another eight weeks of really, really hot weather. Um, somewhere about the end of September, we'll start to break in in the uh, humidity and you know um, uh, in the heat and then in October it will get nice again. These are all the uh, giant Japanese red mustards and you can see this is, uh, I'm holding it up, it's six foot and uh, it has just gone, but if you go the whole way back down, I mean this is just one plant. This whole thing is just one plant. I could take this out and we could eat for a couple days on it and it really didn't get too much in the way of it got a few bugs on the base and uh, but boy this was really a grower I, I'll definitely I still have some seeds left and I'm uh, trying to get it started again in the backyard where it's just a little bit cooler I think that would be beneficial for it uh, some of my caladiums are coming up throughout the yard um, I have different varieties that I've grown but you can see, oh, there's that coleus, that same coleus, and you can see where it has flowered. Uh, these are pentas that are just, you know, a lot of times they're just volunteers in my yard. I don't really, I used to do things in a really uh, mannered, a really tailored way, and now I just kind of let everybody go and do their own thing. You can see the little bee there. They just love the pentas. They love the pentas more than anything I've ever had in my yard. So uh, definitely next year, I think I will grow more pentas than anything else. The blue days needs to be either cut back or pulled out. And all of these coleus are gonna get uh, probably trimmed way, way back. Uh, by the way, you know, what I could do and what you could do is when you have ones like this, and they have kind of bolted and sent out their bloom heads. And you decide you're going to, you know, like here, like this one, for instance. If you take this back to here, back to this area here, and you can see, uh, if you broke this off, you could stick this in water and either use it as a really pretty um, vase arrangement or if you wanted to, you could stick it in soil and see if you could get it to grow again. If you do, you know, pinch this guy off and take, take this off just like that. That goes back into our soil. And this gets taken off. And now we have at least one start. You could, you could trim that one right at at that point and you could trim it up higher and then you could even tr take that little one if you if you got it there but um, I see the the bees are just everywhere you can see how they wouldn't be happy if I was trying to I was going to cut these back today and um, I really I hate to bother them really are doing such a good job so I don't know maybe I'll maybe I'll take a few off the top and and see if I can get but you know this was a mixed uh, packet of seeds that was marigolds uh, I'm sorry uh, coleus 
and it came out with this beautiful velvet with the red center, the uh, chartreuse pink uh, with that burgundy kind of a grape in between, just beautiful. And then this a little bit more, mm, um, I won't say drab, but I will say just subtle. And uh, those were in this one. Yeah, I guess those three or four varieties were all in the same packet and I planted them probably oh six eight years ago and they just still keep coming back in my yard so um, anyway that was moving right along the uh, gardenia seems to be doing okay I think the fact that this big elm tree that's behind me is providing this morning shade for it um, I have friends who say, oh, I, I have, my yard gets all sun. That's all I get is sun. I can't grow anything because that's all I get is sun. And I go, okay, well, you know, you, you can plant a tree or you can uh, add shade to it if you so wish. By the way, the, the liatris, the bees, go after these blooms also. Moving over here. I've taken a lot of the stuff off of my porch because everything needs to be cleaned. But those Shasta daisies that I was growing, uh, the, the plant itself grew, but it never really bloomed. Uh, I had some volunteers from, uh, this is salvia, the red, and I had some blooms just kind of come over here. All of these need to be, will be, you know, cut back and taken off um, and I think what I'm going to do is try to take these and put them in the backyard and break them up but I wanted to show you this um, multicolored spinach and I, I did grow the um, this is a Chinese multicolored spinach and I grew the uh, uh, Japanese giant red mustard which you know I thought was kind of a related thing but it, it's, it's a different type of plant and this grows almost like a coleus, where it, it does come up on kind of a stalk and then it, it separates and all. And the spinach is, is a, a nice flavor, but it has a real body to it. And it, it'll hang on. And we've, we've taken it, I've probably gotten, oh, I don't know, five or six meals out of it. And, uh, and we still have plenty left. And uh, let's see over here, the nasturtiums are pretty much... I think they're making it, but they're they're kind of shot. But the thing that I really wanted to show you, I was really excited about this, is the um, the balsam. That um, this was that um, peppermint stick balsam that I planted probably oh three four months ago, and I did it in the driveway so that um, I would have this really something very pretty that I could look at, and it's also an edible. Uh, both the flowers and the leaves are edible and we can the nice thing is we can see it on both sides we can see it from the from the driveway and if we're sitting on our porch we can look over and we can see that but it got really big it was supposed to be the marigolds were going to be the one on top and then this was going to be shorter and it, it kind of turned around the marigolds st stayed about a foot and a half maybe tops and this balsam got to be well three and four feet but the one that the, what I really wanted to show you and I, oh actually I can show you more from behind do you see all the uh, little things that are here those are all blossom heads and they're just amazing that they're I mean this would be like weeds as far as being easy to grow. But I, I saw these and I thought, oh, aren't they so pretty? All these little green balls. And then whenever I opened it, there they are. Now those I don't think are ready because they're so white. Yeah, I don't think those would be ready. But the ones that I was seeing before, let me see if I can find one for you that's more. I, I suppose the sun is probably killing me here on the. I see 
any that are further on down that are starting to try. Oh, there you go. You see the black? Well, that's just what they look like in the packet. So I think that I could just really you know, wait for another week or two and harvest a lot of these little balls that are on it and have thousands of seeds. So uh, next year I will be able to uh, really make a splash. Oh, here's one. Look at this. Isn't this something? Look at that. It has to be, I don't know, 50 or more. And uh, last night I cut uh, some of these off and then just cut the, the leaves and cut the blossoms and I chopped those up with the Chinese multicolored spinach and I had just a piece of, of bacon and I fried the piece of bacon and I put that in with it and just wilted it and it was it was delicious. We just thoroughly enjoyed that. It had some you know, had some salmon and it was a delicious meal. So anyway, that was just all I wanted to show you. Uh, we're a little bit messy right now and I'm not going to show you a big sweep and tell you everything that's going on. Um, oh, here's another caladium. Pretty, aren't they? This is their time. Caladiums here in Florida, um, their best month is actually August. And um, the impatience here, this has been coming back for Oh, 10 or 11 years. I don't haven't planted anything. It'll just reseed itself and um, it'll die off about, oh, I don't know, December or so. And then about March or April, I'll see it come back again and it'll stay all summer long. So, uh, and the Exoras are here year round. So anyway, that was it. Just wanted to uh, give you a little update. Let's just see those pretties. I think these, um, uh, Balsam will be something that I grow for many years to come. As a matter of fact, I would love to plant it in force down here. Uh, you can see, you remember the marigolds that I showed you, how beautiful everything was? Uh, you can see that uh, they are they are just kind of like that's the, it's about the end of them. And now here is the balsam and I'm thinking that it didn't take as well um, it's not bad it's not bad but um, it's not as strong as it is in the driveway maybe it likes just a little bit more shade so possibly it would look really pretty back here where it, it does get a little bit shade maybe instead of the coleus what do you think so uh, anyway poor Gwendolyn she needs to be rescued from being sunken down in there and uh and that's about it i i i think i i think i've shown you everything so until the next time i hope you all have a great day uh if you would like to subscribe to my channel that would be great give me a thumbs up uh leave me a message i love hearing your messages and i hope to hear from you soon and i hope to see you all real soon until the next time bye bye